Hey my friends, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am doing some makeovers, giving some thrift, thrifted items a little facelift, and actually maybe repurposing a couple of things. But I'm excited for you to see how they turned out. I think you're gonna really be pleased, and it might even be something you might wanna do for yourself, for your own home decor. But today's video is also sponsored by a candle company, and I'm gonna tell you about them in just a minute. But for now, let's get to crafting. these two statues that I thrifted and normally I would leave them like they are but there are several spots on there where the paint the finish is coming off and so obviously I can't resell them that way I'm gonna use this country chic paint and the color of it I don't know if you can see the color but it is in the color Driftwood. The Country Chic paint is a really good clay-based paint. And so I gave the statues two coats of the paint and you don't have to worry about brush marks on this. So that's one thing I really do like about the Country Chic paint. And now I'm just gonna go over it, go over both pieces with this antique wax, the Waverly antique wax. And after I've gone over the whole thing, I'm gonna wipe it back with a shop towel. As you can see, I started out pretty heavy with the antique wax. So once I saw how heavy it was going on, I cut it back some. And when I did the boy statue, I cut it back even more, just so that I would have to wipe less and I used very light strokes when I wiped away the wax. And once I was finished with that, I went over it with a white wax just to kind of tone down the brown just a little bit and just to give it a really good finished look. Now make sure that you stay till the end of the video because I'm gonna show you all of the finished projects at the end. this at a thrift store from Goodwill and I paid four dollars for it and it's supposed to go like this it's supposed to hang on the wall it has the hangers on the back but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do it this way so I'm gonna take these little hangers off I'm gonna take these little pegs out I'm gonna fill in the holes, and then I also, there's a crack right there in the wood, so I'm gonna fill that in, I think. I probably will fill that in, and I'm gonna make this over into something different. Just give it a little facelift, a new life. I'm gonna leave the doors this color, because I like that, but I'm gonna paint everything else, so let me go ahead and get started. The first thing I have to do is take off all of the hardware, and this one right here gave me a little bit of trouble, but I finally did get it out, and then this middle screw also gave me a little trouble, but I got everything out, and then I was ready to fill in all of the cracks and the holes with some wood glue, and once I had everything filled in on the inside and the outside, I let it set overnight just to make sure it was really dry and cured really well. Now I'm going to use this mold that I got from Timu and I'm gonna use some air dry clay and get this little frame and I'm gonna put it at the top, which used to be the bottom, but now it's gonna be the top and I just kinda of wanted to dress up that area. So I put that at the top with some wood glue and some hot glue. Now I'm gonna use the stamp that I got from Timu also and I'm gonna use it to kind of create an indention to make it look like that was an original part of the piece. And once I have all of that in there, I've given it a really good press. I just lift that up and then here is what it looks like. It looks like it was just made to be that way. 
Since I'm making this into a cabinet that would sit on a countertop, it needed some feet. So I found these little wood balls at Hobby Lobby. So I'm using wood glue and hot glue to attach them to the bottom. And then I'm gonna turn it over and let it set and let it cure really well. All right, everything is dry and I'm gonna give this a coat of paint and I'm gonna use the Waverly chalk paint in the color moss. And I was really glad because it only took one coat of the paint. Now, I will say that the clay part that I put at the top, once the paint dried, I had to go back and fill in some little spots that I couldn't notice when the paint was wet, but I went over the little clay part more than once just to make sure I got it all filled in. To try to get the feet to match the doors as good as possible, I just watered down some of the antique wax and dabbed the brush onto a cloth and then just went over each of the feet with that cloth just to lightly stain it. I didn't want it to be too heavy. And while it's not a perfect match, it's a really good match. And now I'm gonna just go in and sand it and just distress it a little bit. And after I've sanded it and wiped it all down, then I'm just gonna go over the whole piece with clear wax. Now, normally I wipe back the clear wax, but this wood, it was really dry. So I just left, I didn't put a super thick coat, but I left the clear wax on. I didn't wipe any back. And once I covered everything with the clear wax, then I took the Waverly Antique Wax and I put a little bit on my brush. And before I touched it to the cabinet, I wiped it off on the napkin some and then went over, you know, the edges, the parts where I had sanded, as well as that mold area and just kind of lightly, almost sort of dry brushed that antique wax onto the, onto the clear wax, onto the finish. And I really like the way it came out. It looks perfectly aged. It looks like it, you know, has been sitting there for a long time. And I really like the way it turned out. And finally, I went over that natural trim with just a clear wax. Now I wanna quickly tell you about the sponsor of the video. It is a company called All Life, and they sent me this scented candle set, and it's actually a men's candle scent. The scent style is more of a woody scent, but they are soy wax candles, and they have a cotton wick. And there are four scents, you have the vintage oak, the smoke and vanilla, the vintage leather, as well as the lavender wood. They are, you can get them individually, but you can also get this four pack. So it would make a great gift for the man in your life. But honestly, since these have a woody scent, these would be also great to use for fall. Okay, so I have some molds here. Um, I'm gonna make some molds out of this casting resin, and it comes in two parts. This is part A and this is part B. And you just mix equal parts, but I've already done a couple. I've got this crown, I've got this, I've got this I'm gonna use on some projects, but I just wanna show you how easy it is. So you're just gonna mix let me move that out of the way. And it happens pretty fast. So you wanna make sure that you get it done pretty quickly. So I'm gonna put this part A, then part B, Stir it up 
and it goes in clear. I'm actually gonna do one more of this one because I've already done one. And you just pour it in. And I love it because it goes in all the little cracks and crevices. And I'm gonna take a little stick just kind of push it along, help it get in any of the spaces where it's not. Okay, so I'm gonna do that one. Then this one is a redesign with Prima one. So now I'm just gonna get this in here, in this lion. I think this one's in there, good. And then once it starts to dry, it turns white, which, let's see, there we go. It's clear now, but I will see if I can do like a time lapse so you can see it starting to turn white. Here it is all white and basically you just kind of pop it out. It's super easy and it came out very cute. And now this one is one that I actually got from Timu. And these are a little more finicky to kind of maneuver but you just kind of work around the edges and separate it from the resin and then at this point I just kind of get it started on one end and I turn it over and I just kind of start rolling it backwards like this just roll it back and it just kind of comes out that way and it's just super easy and this is what it looks like, and I think it turned out really cute, but uh, I will have the Timu molds linked in the description box. This one is a redesign with Prima, and we sell it in the store, so if you're local, you can come get it in the store, but I will have this one in the link to this one in the description box. For this project, I have this book that I got from probably Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna use these two molds on here, on the spine, like this. And I'm gonna use wood glue to, on the back, to get them attached. This is actually an idea that I got from Erin over at the Provincial Farmhouse. And I will make sure that I put a link to her channel in my description box, but she does a lot of really pretty and really unique things like this. Now I'm just going to let this start drying, let this glue start drying for just a few minutes. Now I'm gonna paint the book. The molds have dried enough to where I can paint over them gently, but I'm gonna paint the book, uh, this Waverly white, or plaster rather. And while that is drying, I'm gonna paint this separately because I'm gonna put a transfer on the top of this book and I don't want the paint, I don't wanna have to paint over the transfer. So I'm gonna paint the lion separately and after I have the book painted and the transfer on, then I'm gonna put the lion down in the middle. So now I'm just gonna get both of these painted.
Now that the paint is dry on the lion head, I'm gonna go ahead and use some clear wax and I'm gonna coat the lion really good with that clear wax. And then I'm gonna use a shop towel to wipe back the excess once I get all the clear wax on there. And then once I wipe it back, I will go in with a very light, light brush of the antique wax. I only have a little bit on my brush and I dab away the excess. And then I just, with a very light hand, I go over the face with, with that brush and then I just use that shop towel and wipe back the uh, excess and it really comes out exactly like I envisioned it in my head. I love when that happens. All right, the paint is dry on the book. So now I'm just gonna put some stencils on here. I'm gonna use multiple stencils and this is the stencil set, I'm not stencils, transfers. And these are the transfers that I'm using and I got them from Amazon so I'll put the link in the description box but now i'm just going to cut some of these out and lay them out and see how i want them arranged all right i think this is what i'm going to do i have this piece i have this little word piece and then i have these two pieces and with transfers you can actually layer them so whatever you want to be on top or most pronounced you want to put it on second so i'm going to go ahead and set the words down first. I'm gonna set this one down first, and then I'm gonna come in and put these pieces on because I, these are the pieces I want to be, you know, more pronounced and in the front. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get this started. If you've been around my channel, you know I love transfers and they're so simple. You just take the little white piece off the back of the transfer and you set it where you want it on your project. You use the little stick to transfer it down onto your project. And once you have transferred it all down, then you use that little plastic piece and you rub over it really well. All right, I have the transfers on there. So now I'm gonna put the the casting mold and I want to do this before I put any wax on the book because I want this to be able to stick. You can also add a couple of dollops of hot glue just so that when you put it down onto your project it'll set immediately but I didn't have a hot glue gun handy so it was fine. And then once this has time to dry a little bit and set, then I will start finishing this up with some clear wax and then some antique wax. And now that I have it down, I probably could have waited to paint this and do the wax and stuff because I was thinking originally that I was gonna put some of that transfer on the whole thing, but it ended up just needing it at the top and bottom. But Anyway, I'm a little ahead of the game, so that's okay. But now I'm gonna wait for this to dry. Now I'm going in with the clear wax and I'm putting the clear wax on there. Like always, using a shop towel to wipe back any excess and then going in with the antique wax and I'm using very little on my brush and I'm just going around the edges and on the very top sort of dry brushing on that casting on the side, on the spine of the book, and then wiping away the excess. And it's time for the reveal of the projects. Here is the little boy and girl statue. And I think they turned out so pretty. They almost have sort of a concrete look to them, but I think they would be a perfect addition to any bedroom, side tables, uh, bookshelf. I just think they're so pretty. And then this book, I'm really happy with the way this turned out. Erin always makes hers look so beautiful. So if she ever watches this, hey Erin, I hope that you like it and I hope that it measured up, but I just think this is just so pretty and just such a different piece of decor. 
And then I think the cabinet turned out so pretty. This would be perfect to have on your bathroom counter for cosmetics or skincare or to use on, you know, in your bedroom for jewelry or if you have, like I'm fixing to show you, the candles like I got from All Life. You could put the candles in there, but I think it turned out really pretty. And don't forget, I will have a link to these candles in the description box. I think they're so pretty. They would be perfect, again, for the man in your life. Or honestly, if you just like sort of woodsy fragrances, then this would be perfect. I love all these fragrances. And again, they would be great for fall. So you might wanna check these out but I just think they're really pretty and they would make great additions to your fall decor. Check out the description box for their link. Let me know in the comments which project was your favorite and don't forget to give me a big thumbs up and also share this video with someone that you think might would enjoy it. And if you like this kind of content and you have not subscribed to my channel, I would love it if you would be a part of my YouTube family by clicking that subscribe button. And before I close out this video, I just want to make sure that I share a Bible verse with you. And this Bible verse comes from Colossians 3, 23 and 24. And it says, work willingly at whatever you do as though you were working for the Lord and not for people. Remember that the Lord will give you an inheritance as your reward and that the master you're serving is Christ. I hope that you're blessed by that and I hope you have a blessed day. And if you would like to see more videos like this where I flip some of the things that I've thrifted, then check out the boxes you see on the screen right now and I'll see you next time. Bye.